Hey budget nerds! Today we'll look at a newcomer in the NAS market, the Ugreen DXP4800+. Plus. Yes, they sent it over to me for review, but as always, I'll tell it like it is. Ugreen has been around for a while, making things like chargers, adapters, power stations, docks, cables, etc. They entered the NAS market and are now launching in more countries, or at least in the US. They currently sell six NASs, and I believe this one is in the middle of the pack. It's being crowdfunded on Kickstarter until May 10th. They've more than met their goal, so that's great. I and several other YouTubers have hardware in hand, so your pledge is likely a safe bet. You can get this model for $454 on Kickstarter if you're quick, again ends May 10th, and we'll go for about $700 afterwards, which is a bit pricey. Like many reviewers have said, the hardware is great, but the software still needs work. In the box you get some papers, two ethernet cables, a little screwdriver, two hard drive bay keys, some thermal blocks to cool the M.2 SSDs, a power cord, and the power brick, which outputs 19 volts at 7.9 amps, totaling 150.1 watts. The NAS is right here, and I think it looks really nice. It's heavy and feels very solid and built very well. See what I mean? It looks nice. On the front, you have the power button, some LEDs for power, network, and hard drive status, a SD card reader, a USB-C 3.2 port, and a USB 3.2 port, both Gen 2. On the back, you get an HDMI port, a USB 3.2 Gen 1 port, two USB 2.0 ports, a 2.5 gigabit or multi-gigabit port, a 10 gigabit Ethernet port, a reset button, and the power jack. So lots of great I.O. and the 2.5 and 10 gigabit jacks are awesome to have on this. There's also a dust filter on the back and it's metal and held on with a magnet. It's a small touch, but it's a great feature. On the bottom you have the door to access the M.2 and RAM expansion slots. The rubber feet on this thing are also great. The drive bays pop right out. They're all plastic, but they feel fine. They do have a tab to push that will allow you to slide the tray open, uh, a bit to place the hard drives in. It's super easy, but I did make sure to hold it so the drives wouldn't accidentally fall out. It has a Pentium Gold 12th Gen 8505 processor with 5 cores and 6 threads. It comes with 8 gigs of DDR5 RAM, which is also great. That's the most RAM any NAS I've tested came with, and being DDR5 is awesome. You can upgrade it up to 64 gigabytes of RAM. The M.2 slots are PCIe 4.0 and the two drives I had installed without any issues. If you use them, you'll want to use the provided thermal pads to keep them cool. I'm installing a few Synology drives here, but Ugreen did eventually send me some Western Digital drives for testing. It will support up to 96 terabytes of space, including two 4 terabyte M.2 drives. You could use the M.2 drives for read or write caching, but you may only see speed benefits if you transfer the same data frequently. It also supports the most common file systems and drive configurations, including RAID 5, 6, or 10, if you have enough drives installed, of course. You can use the key to lock the drive bays, but it's not much of a deterrent as anyone could rotate that lock with most any small tool. Setting it up was really easy. There's an app for your phone or tablet, but I didn't test it. Once set up, you can create volumes and set up your disks how you'd like. And then you're greeted with a familiar screen. Another nice thing is your OS and NAS files are installed on an internal SSD, 
so it runs pretty quick and won't take up space on your drives. I ran a few speed tests, and they were a bit slower than I thought they'd be, being between 30 and 45 megabytes per second. It's not terrible. My Synology NAS fared better hovering around 50 or so megabytes per second, and this NAS is bottlenecked by my 1 gigabit per second network setup. But if I had some faster network equipment, it would likely be quicker. Other reviewers found the speed to be also slower than expected and sometimes inconsistent. This NAS runs on what they call UGOS, which is based on Debian Linux, and this is where the positives end. They've had UGOS for a while, but it looks like their international models get a different flavor, which is fine, but it's very bare bones and at times feels very beta. What I fiddled with worked well, but there isn't much to fiddle with. I naturally made a beeline for Plex, but it's nowhere to be found. They did recently release Docker, so if you're somewhat nerdy, you could run Plex from there, which I did. But if you're not very tech-savvy, it can be a bit tricky to get running. There aren't many other apps here, other than a few of the basic NAS maintenance and management apps. They have been releasing updates, which is great. But other than Docker, I haven't seen much in the app department. I reached out to them and asked if they were working on a native Plex app for this NAS, and they said they were not. So it appears they plan on heavily relying on Docker, for now at least. Other reviewers also mentioned the CPU ran hot under load and that the fan can get a bit loud at 60 decibels. I never really tested the CPU, but when it was applying an update, the fan did get kind of loud. It can also hit upwards of 50 to 67 watts of power during peak operation with all the hard drive bays full and in operation, and will consume 26 watts of power on standby. So it's not the most energy efficient NAS out there either. Well, to wrap up, as stated, yes, the hardware is great. And for $454 on their Kickstarter page, although it's ending pretty soon, it's a pretty decent value, even if the software is a bit underbaked. At the MSRP of $700, it becomes a different story. Yes, the hardware is still great, and there's lots of I.O. and potential here, but the software definitely holds it back. Again, at least for now. If you aren't bothered by the maturing software, then it's pretty compelling at 454. If you're having to get it at 700, then double check to see if the software has caught up. There is a page in their manual that says next level storage, limitless possibilities. I would say for now, the possibilities are limited, but there is limitless potential. Keep an eye on this one and see what they make of their software. If you have a comment, dump them below, and thanks for watching.